So over the last few weeks, there's been a lot of debate online about code generated by AI. And today I just want to share a bit of my thoughts about this and why I think at least 95% of all code will be generated by AI in the upcoming years. Uh, but I have a bit of different take on this and why this will be and why this will happen. Uh, but let's just play this clip from Dario Amade before we kind of go into my thoughts about this. If I look at coding, programming, which is one area where AI is making the most progress, um, what we are finding is we are not far from a world, I think we'll be there in three to six months, where AI is writing 90% of the code. And then in 12 months, we may be in a world where AI is writing essentially all of the code. So yeah, that's a pretty bold statement coming from like a big company like Anthropic that basically has a lot of software developers. But uh, I kind of wanted to go into th uh, why I think and how this will happen. And we have seen like this vibe coding that has been very polarizing like online between software engineers and other people working in software. And I wanted to take a quick look at kind of what I think will be the impacts of all of this code generated by AI. Uh, this is just basically my thoughts, there's no facts here, but I thought it could be like an interesting and a bit of a different video. So if you kind of look at kind of why I think 95% of all code will be generated by AI, is basically just because of like a code generation explosion. So I don't think it has a lot of to do with uh, AI replacing software engineers, uh, like not in like the first years, maybe like in 10 years, who knows, but uh, I think it's just gonna be that 95%, it's just gonna be because of the amount of code produced, it doesn't really have to do so much with uh, maybe you can say quantity over quality, right? But if you look at kind of these platforms, so let's say Bolt.new, Loveable, and all of these uh, platforms like DataButton, they have a lot of users, right? and they have paying customers, and these users generate a lot of code. So I just took like an example, let's say we combine these 2.5 million users, and if they generate 5,000 lines of code per week, that's a bit much maybe, but let's say, yeah, just an example, there might be more users too on other platforms like Cursor, and that's like 12.5 billion lines of code each week. And yeah, that could be like arbitrary, but we can look at this, what happened to Loveable because they have this incident report on GitHub, they were taken down because they generated so many repositories. So they have, they created 315,000 repos and 10,000 repos per day. So <laughs> you can, that's the kind of the scope of the amount of code that was generated using these platforms. And these have just been picking up lately, like with the terms vibe coding, and it's just gonna be so much lines of code produced that it's just gonna be, uh, yeah, you can kind of compare it to, uh, before we have like professional pho photographers, right? And uh, they, there was not a lot of images produced, but when everyone got their iPhone, there are billions of images produced, right? So I don't think it has so much to do with code quality and replacing people, that 95, 90% amount of code written. It's more about the amount, the volume of code. So we can just do an example, like, so if we go over to cursor, right? And I do like import and we have this tab. So here I just wrote 50%. Uh, still, I just wrote like 10%. Uh, let's do chat, right? And I just wrote like, five, ten percent of this with tab and yeah and AI did the rest. So we can also improve upon this. We can just say we open up this and we do uh, like a, let's say we can just do in code intrude on pi write a function to get a chat completion from open AI and we can select the agent right and we can just send this and this is basically zero percent handwritten and hundred percent code written by AI. So you can kind of see where the scale goes here if a lot of people start using these tools, like uh, yeah, GitHub Copilot and Cursor and all of these other. So basically all of this code was like 100% written by AI. So I, I just think it's gonna be like a volume game, right? Not so much about replacing software engineers. Maybe they have more to do, who knows? Uh, at least for the short time. So I don't think people should be worried about that. 95% of code generated by AI. 
Of course, I'm not 100% sure, that's just my logical thinking. But of course, who knows? I also just wanted to talk a bit about this has been very polarizing, this vibe coding that is kind of coming up. So I just found some Reddit post and we can see there's a lot of, yeah, polarizing opinions about this. And just we can just look at a few of these posts, just read some comments and just look at this because it's been very interesting to look at. And suddenly this was like, everyone has an opinion on this. Uh, like me personally, I don't have any strong opinions. I just think it's pretty cool, to be honest. But let's look at a few of these posts. I thought it was just interesting to see how polarized people are about this topic. So here we kind of have a positive post. Vibe coding is actually great. Everyone around is talking shit about vibe coding, but I think people miss the real power to us non-developer users. And yeah, that is kind of what I think. But uh, so like, it's kind of hard like, if you come into coding, there's a lot of bunch of stuff to learn, but I think like using vibe coding to get something on the paper, to get a game working like halfway, that could be very motivating to dive deeper into code. It doesn't have to be this polarizing, a very good thing, uh, getting more people to write software, uh, but people don't really agree. And if you kind of look at some comments here, you can see this is kind of what I agree with. So why not do both vibe coding and then actual coding? So I vibe code until I hit the ball and it doesn't work anymore. Then I get my hands dirty and think about solutions myself. Uh, I just think this is a very quick way to uh, yeah, get started on our project. And if you're kind of new to software, this can be very motivating, right? Uh, but we also have this post, vibe coding is a dangerous fantasy. And people comment like, people can and do get sued over poor systems. You can't just leak people's personal info, credit cards and be oopsies, I was vibe coding. Yeah, of course I agree with that, but I think it's just, do really people vibe all that way? Creating databases with personal info and credit cards. And you see, I mean the name vibe coding itself pretty much sounds like you don't know what you're doing. What do you assume uh, from someone who describes himself as a vibe surgeon or a vibe lawyer? Does it sound like a guy who has no idea and believes he magically uh, gets the things on the fly? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't really compare writing software to surgery, but that seems a bit far-fetched, right? Uh, it's not that serious. <laughs> uh, but it could be, like, if you do medical software, you shouldn't really vibe code, that's for sure. And there was this popular podcast on Y Combinator, where vibe coding is the future. People are not happy. And here there was a lot of comments. I'm not going to go through everything, but... Uh, as a software engineer working on a startup with an offshore dev team, I can tell you that the ones who vibe code does not last long. The good devs are much better than LLMs, still in my opinion. If you're not a senior enough to understand what cursor code actually is doing, when you will never be able to debug it. Best modules, failure. Of course, that's true. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff about uh, Levels IO. He has been really diving into this vibe coding. He created this very popular fly game that brought in like, what was it, $87,000 a month. And he's been really leaning into this and got a lot of people involved. They are doing this uh, vibe coding jam competition with like, uh, yeah, pretty cool prices. So I thought it was pretty interesting. And But of course, this is a very polarized subject. And we even saw these programming legends like John Carmack talking about vibe coding. He commented on this post. Uh, like, why are people vibe coding games with 3JS instead of using game engines like Unity or Unreal? There's been countless efforts to make software dev more visual, but uh, anything that isn't simply a collection of human and LLM readable text files continues to step on landmines. So, yeah, I think you should listen to this guy when it comes to programming and at least game programming. So, yeah, a lot of opinions about this topic, and I just thought it's pretty interesting to observe this. Uh, like my opinion is it that uh, I think it's good for start people going into software, wanting to start developing stuff. You can make something work in like five minutes instead of spending like a couple of hours to actually see something working. And I think that's just a big motivation boost for people. Uh, I don't think vibe coding is for like a senior software developer that has been working for 25 years then you know what you're doing. I guess maybe you can even vibe code better if you have that kind of experience, right? Uh, just a very polarizing subject and it's pretty interesting to look at uh, uh, this. And I just think this is kind of going back to this 
with vibe coding becoming if it's gonna co become very popular then uh, of course a lot of more code is gonna get produced so i just thought a bit about what can be the impacts of all this code generated by ai so the things i kind of wrote down here is like it could be like a big skill gap closer, like if you kind of want to get into software. I don't think it's ever been a time in history where it's easier now, where you can use these LLMs to get you started. It can explain code for you. And yeah, it's just, I think it's just an overall positive. Uh, of course, it's going to be a lot of dangerous software, of course, but uh, overall, I think this is very positive. Personalized software is something I think is going to be pretty big going forward uh, upcoming years. So we can just do an example. So let's say uh, we head to the terminal here and we can do create a simple countdown app with an alarm that goes off every single 90 seconds for 10 minutes for my experiment, right? We can do this. And here I'm just using Claude code. This is like an autonomous, more like an autonomous uh, AI agent that can use this. Yeah, I wanna proceed. Yes, let's accept that. Yes, I want some styling. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so we can just open index.html. Okay, so here it is. So let's start it off. And uh, let's come back in 90 seconds. And here if we have the alarm. Okay, here it worked. It worked. Even scared me. So you can see that was the alarm and it just keeps continuous. So in like uh, one minute, we created like a simple uh, app we needed for just this experiment we are going to run. And after that, I can just delete the code and forget about it. But I also think with all this software generated, there is going to be a big security risk. And I think in like the next, maybe this year, maybe next year, there's going to be like a big uh, incident with AI and software. That's just, it has to happen, right? Something big is going to happen that uh, puts a lot of data exposed or something goes wrong. Uh, I think it's just bound to happen with AI. Uh, some positive stuff, we have low risk going after new ideas. You can generate like a quick prototype using these LLMs to get something going. Maybe it can be like a, like a pitch or something. And I think each line of code is going to get cheaper over time. But maybe the quality is uh, degrading, we'll see. Uh, but this is where we need the uh, experienced, well-educated software developers to do the code that is important to infrastructure and people. You can vibe code an infrastructure uh, yeah, program, right? Uh, and I just think there's no going back now. Uh, people are not gonna let these tools uh, go and go back to the old way they used to write because I just think everyone I talk to that is in software are enjoying these tools to a certain degree and they are getting more done, I think. Uh, uh, and I guess we just see in a few years of this is uh, positive on this industry. I guess we just have to wait and see. But I don't think there's any way going back now uh, five years in, in this field. Uh, I just think things are going to change even more going forward. So yeah, that was basically what I wanted to talk about today. So yeah, like I said, this is why I think 95% of code will be generated by AI going forward. Uh, it's not about replacing people that work in uh, software and tech. It's just the volume is going to get so high that those 5-10% that professionals write is just going to be like very niche and not the overall representation of the lines of code being written. And I found this nice image here that I colorized using AI Studio. An uncertain energy transition a century ago. And this might be the energy transition from horses or for, from horses to cars in coding or programming, we'll see. Uh, it's just gonna be very interesting to follow along. So yeah, give me your thoughts on this subject. It's a very hot topic and yeah, thank you for tuning in.